When we think of false imprisonment, we often imagine an innocent suspect arrested and jailed for a crime the person didn't commit. But does the tort of false imprisonment require that the plaintiff be forcefully restrained or locked away? The Supreme Judicial Court of Maine considered that question in the 1912 case of Whitaker v. Sanford. Frank Sanford led a religious sect whose followers lived in a colony located in Durham, Maine. Florence Whitaker's husband was a minister in the sect, and she was a member. Whitaker had traveled with her four children to join her husband in a colony run by the sect in the Middle Eastern town of Jaffa. But a year later, Mr. Whitaker returned to Maine. Whitaker remained in Jaffa, but eventually decided to leave the sect. She then prepared to travel back to the United States by steamship. Around the time that Whitaker was preparing to leave, Sanford arrived at Jaffa aboard the sect's sailing vessel, Kingdom. Sanford offered Whitaker passage back to Maine aboard the kingdom. Whitaker hesitated, concerned that she might not be allowed off the ship until she returned to the sect. Sanford promised that she would be free to leave the ship as soon as it arrived in Maine. Relying on that promise, she and her children boarded the kingdom. When the kingdom anchored offshore in Maine, the ship's boats took all the other passengers ashore, but Sanford refused to provide a boat for Whitaker and her children to go ashore. Mr. Whitaker came aboard, and each time she requested a boat to go ashore, Sanford and her husband each claimed the other was responsible for arranging a boat. She was able to go ashore in her husband's company for short excursions, but returned to the kingdom each time. She and her children remained aboard the kingdom for a month until an associate obtained a writ of habeas corpus from a local judge. The officer serving the writ on Sanford took Whitaker and her children ashore. Whitaker sued Sanford for false imprisonment. The trial court awarded Whitaker a verdict of $1,100. Sanford appealed to the Supreme Judicial Court of Maine. 